called the nation's silent mass disaster. At any given time, it's estimated that there are more than 40,000 sets of unidentified human remains in the United States. Here in Ohio, just over 100 John and Jane Doe's waiting to get their names back. And you may be able to help thanks to a free national database that helps connect these cases to missing persons cases. Investigator Sarah Goldenberg continues our series, Unidentified. We've been profiling John and Jane Doe cases out of Northern Ohio for the past five months in hopes someone out there may recognize them or have information that could help solve their case. This week, we're highlighting a database that detectives and medical examiners use and even you can use to help solve unidentified cases. Missing for just over two decades. Paula was 21. She went missing in 1987 from Kansas City, Missouri. Years went by without leads. Then in 2010, Paula Beverly Davis's sister, Stephanie, was watching TV and learned about an online database that helps match missing persons to unidentified cases. And it's open to the public. Within 30 minutes, I had my match and how I realized it was her was by the description of the tattoos that she had that I didn't think anybody else would have except for Paula. Paula had been an unidentified murder victim for decades, more than 500 miles away in a suburb of Dayton. And her sister had been found deceased in Ohio 14 hours after she went missing from Kansas City. The Justice Department database Stephanie used to solve the case is called NamUs, the National Missing and Unidentified Person System. It had just recently launched. Chuck Herrick, a former forensic DNA analyst, has been leading NamUs for years. He's a senior physical scientist with the National Institute of Justice. Their focus is on families like Paula's. It's our job to let them know what happened to that person, to identify that person, Detectives, medical examiners, coroners, and families can all use NamUs. When a case comes in, investigators enter the basics and unique details into the database. And those details for each case can almost act as clues to help you try to match the cases. Exactly. Everything from height, weight, and hair and eye color, all the way to scars, marks, and tattoos, which can be entered in NamUs as well. More than 14,000 unidentified remains are listed in NamUs. We asked the U.S. Department of Justice for a breakdown of the causes of death for these cases. They sent us this chart showing right now the majority of cases are listed as unknown and undetermined, followed by homicides and accidents. The murder cases usually can't be solved without the victims' names. If you have a missing loved one, you can help. They're able to possibly provide additional information, like such as seeing the person that went missing get into a car uh, and go drive off with somebody that nobody else saw because the two people were together. NamUs has helped resolve tens of thousands of cases, sometimes with the help of families or even web sleuths. Herrick hopes more people will start using it to help give these John and Jane Doe's their names and their dignity back one case at a time. They stumble on it, they go to it, and they see its value. They see the utility of matching the cases together and putting as much information in as possible. So I would just urge everyone out there to take a look at NamUs. More than a dozen states now require law enforcement use NamUs when they have a missing persons or unidentified case. Ohio is not one of those states. NamUs provides other free services to investigators, including DNA analysis, fingerprint and dental comparison, and forensic genetic genealogy. Sarah Goldenberg, 19 News. And if you're looking for more information on NAM NamUs or that database, we have a full link to all of that information on our website right now. That is cleveland19.com.